Today's challenge is to take an object, slice it up, then use a single geometry node setup to animate the pieces and create a variety of satisfying visual effects. I'm Sina, and this is a Blender VFX tutorial. All we need to start is the original model. We're about to slice up this model. So create a new collection to contain the pieces. The safest way to slice it up is a non-destructive approach that retains the original model. To do this, add a cube, scale it, position it at the far end of the model, then add a boolean modifier to the cube, set its operation to intersect, and choose the original model as the target object. With the original model intact, we can now hide them from render and viewport. This leaves us with the boolean cube. Now all we need to do is to select this cube, duplicate it by pressing shift D, and move the duplicate a bit to the right to create the next slice. Keep repeating this until the boolean cubes cover the entire model. With the slices in place, create another collection, this time to hold the objects we need for the visual effect. The first object will be the placeholder for our geometry node setup. The second object is a plane, which we'll be using later to animate the visual effect. Move this animator plane to the far end of the model and create an animation keyframe by right-clicking on the location value and selecting the Insert Keyframe option. Repeat the same process, this time with the animator plane on the other side of the model. Even though we'll be hiding this animator plane from the render, soon you will see how it plays an important role in our visual effect. Now one last thing to do before we move over to the Geometry Node workspace is to select the transition object we created earlier. Go to its Modifiers tab, add a Geometry Node modifier, and press New. And with that out of the way, we can now head over to the Geometry Node workspace, where you can see that Blender has already placed two nodes in our setup, the Group Input and the Group Output nodes. We don't need the Group Input node, so delete it. In its place, we're going to bring in a few other nodes. So, take a deep breath, then press Shift A to bring up the Add menu and use the search field to find a Translate Instances node, a Rotate Instances node, a Scale Instances node, and finally, a Collection Info node. On the Collection Info node, select the collection that contains the sliced model. Switch its setting from Original to Relative, and don't forget to turn on the Separate Children option so that Blender treats each slice as a separate object. Also, make sure to turn off the Local Space options on the Rotate Instances node as well as the Translate Instances node. At this point, the Geometry node setup is already showing our model, so we can go ahead and hide the collection containing the slices, both from Viewport and render. Render. Using the parameters on the Translate, Rotate, and Scale Instances node, we can transform the slices that make up our model. But, as you can see, all of the slices are being transformed by the same amount. We will be changing this in the next step, so that each slice is only transformed proportionally, depending on its distance from the animator plane. To allow the animator plane to affect our sliced model, we need a few more nodes. So, once again, take a deep breath, then use the Add menu and the Search field to drop in a Vector Math node and duplicate it by pressing Shift D. Now set the operation of the first math node to subtract and the second one to dot product, then add a Position node and an Object Info node. On the Object Info node, select the animator plane and make sure to switch it from Original to Relative. The subtract node calculates the distance between the animator plane and each individual slice, while the dot product node lets us set the forward direction, which in our case is along the positive x axis. The result of all this is that now each slice is being scaled depending on its distance to the animator plane. Connecting the output of the dot product node to the scale, rotate, or translate instances nodes gives different results, but there's a problem right now. As you can see, every slice, no matter how far, is being affected by the animator plane. Instead, what we want is there to be a cutoff, meaning that slices that are farther than a certain distance should all be affected by the same amount. Moreover, we also want the slices that are behind our animator plane to not be affected at all. While this might sound complicated, the good thing is that we only need a few more nodes to make it happen. So go ahead and use the Add menu this time to bring in a Map Range node, two Math nodes, the operation of the first one set to power, and the second one set to subtract. And finally, add a combine XYZ node. The 
map range node with the clamp option turned on is the node that allows us to set the threshold distance both behind and in front of the animator plane. The power node acts as an easing function and lets us adjust the rate at which the slices scale as a function of their distance. Pay attention to the subtract node as we are using it to reverse the scale value so that slices in front of the animator plane gradually scale up as the plane gets closer to them. Finally, the Combine XYZ node allows us to enable or disable the scaling along the X, Y, and Z directions. Now that we have the scaling part of our visual effect in place, let's add a few more nodes to rotate the slices. For this, we only need a Math node and a Combine XYZ node. Now, if we set the operation of the Math node to Multiply, we can use the second value of this node to tweak the rotation of the slices. Just remember that this value is not in degrees, but in radians. Easy enough, type in pi into the multiplier field to get one half of a complete rotation. In our case, this rotation will only take place about the x-axis, as determined by the combined xyz node, but feel free to experiment with the other axes. As for translation, simply select and duplicate the two nodes that we recently added, then connect them to the translate instances node. The combine XYZ node lets us set the axis along which translation takes place, while the multiplier of the math node lets us set the distance by which each slice is translated. Using these nodes, you can tweak the scaling, rotation, and translation of the visual effect. You can have any of the three transformations in isolation, or you can combine them to create more intricate results. Here are a few examples along with their parametric values. If you're interested in stylized visual effects, here's another video for you. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, relax and stop to smell the roses.